I've got a load of mailbag items here. I'm going to do a mega mailbag. I've got some review items in here. I've got all sorts of stuff. And there's a lot more coming. I've got so much stuff coming, I'm going to be doing lots of mega mailbags. So I'm going to be doing lots of items, chopped editing, try and speed up the whole looking at them thing. All right, so stick around and uh, see what I've got. First thing. What on earth is this? Can't even get the packet open. <laughs> right, open. Ah, okay. It's a big battery. Some serious packaging, isn't there? So you go, it's an IMR. 26650, 4300 milliamp hours, 30 amps. <laughs> right. Now, I got this for a torch, quite an impressive torch. Now, I'm a firm believer of when you buy batteries, you never quite know what you're going to get, but generally, price is a reasonable guide. Okay, so you don't buy the cheapest lithium batteries you can find on AliExpress or whatever, you buy the more expensive ones because generally you have a much better success rate. This feels substantial, it feels heavy, it feels about the right weight. So I'm comfortable that this is legitimate, especially with the really professional packaging. It doesn't look cheap. It looks nice, okay? It made a box for it and everything. So I'd say A grade. I think it's good. No dodginess about it. I've got that for this torch. This one I picked up a while ago. I don't know, not long ago actually. A few weeks, I've had it. It takes one of these batteries. Now I've got an 18650 in here, which is actually a reclaimed one. We have an old battery pack. But I've got this battery go in this torch. This is a pretty amazing torch actually, it's extremely bright, it's got a nice, I don't know, it's a fairly broad beam pattern, so it's very really usable, it's not like a spot. I've been using this a bit, and it's got different brightness levels, let's try and get it. Yep. Hold it on, hold it on again, hold it on again, alright, <laughs> that actually makes my hand feel warm, I can feel the heat on my hand from that, and this is an LED torch, there you go, that's the highest brightness level there. But that's what this battery is for, is this torch. Because this little battery here is a bit hard for it, I think. It's a bit stressy. So I've got a big battery. So I'm going to charge this up, leave it in the torch, and it should be good. Um, but this battery's working fine. But at least now I've got a decent battery in here. That should definitely not be stressing it too much. I'll be a link down below for this. So these are just a bunch of 0.1 inch headers. These are quite easy to get. There's nothing particularly special about them, really. Single in line, 0.1 inch header. And it also has the female ones to go with it. Okay, the female ones are actually what I really purchased this set for. I didn't have many left, so I thought I'd, I'd stock up on them. And uh, these are really handy for doing things like Arduino and things like that, because you can just then interface, just make your own plug interfaces and, and plug things in and out. Very handy for that. Right, what's in this one? Hmm, bags. <laughs> yes, these are the home buttons for iPhones. Two of those, one white, one black, and these are the touch sensor ones. So these are for the iPhone 6S. Basically what I've been thinking about is my iPhone 6S and my wife's iPhone 6S. You know, they're getting a bit long in the tooth now. I'm eventually going to start to replace parts on them with the import duties that are coming in on the 1st of December in New Zealand. Which, well, by the time you see this video, they'll be in. Sorry, too late. I thought I'd stock up on little bits and pieces and try and get as much stuff in before I um, have to worry about paying duty on it when it comes in. Because you can't buy these things locally. You know, you can't, you're not locally manufactured, you have to get them from China. It's not fair, you have to pay a fee on it because you're trying to protect local companies. Well, local companies don't have these things. Thanks a lot to my Patreon supporters. You're all really much appreciated. I only want to use the links down below to buy things from my channel. The links do help me because I, I get a commission on anything you buy using Banggood or AliExpress if I put a special AliExpress link down there. So please do use those links if you're going to buy anything from those sites because it does give me a commission fee. And it doesn't cost you any more, but I benefit from it because it gives me a bit of money to spend and makes me, allows me to buy things from my bag and help make content for the channel. So I really appreciate anyone who uses those links. Thank you very much. Also, watching to the end of this video also helps my channel a lot. Give me a thumbs up. Helps my channel a lot. Commenting down below. Anything. Just send me a chat. It helps my channel. All those kinds of interactions and things like that. Everything helps. So please do take the effort and do those things because it does make a big difference to the channel. The more people that do it, the faster my channel will grow and it will just get better and better. As you can see here, I've got two Raspberry Pi 3s. Um, this one looks a bit squashed. Let's open it up and see what happens. Hopefully it's not damaged. Now I've never had a Raspberry Pi before. Never had one. Completely new to me. But I've got some projects which may require one. So I've got things on the go which um, I can use these for. One of those is to have a web server which will run for Raspberry Pi. 
I think it can do it. <laughs> I hope it can do it. I've got some other projects as well, but it's got like an SD card slot on there, something like that. So I've got no experience with these. If anyone give me advice about these, um, you know, please do chime in because you know anyone's got a lot of experience. You know, I want to hear from you too. I've got no idea what I'm doing, and it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a, a quite a steep learning curve, but that's fine. I, I quite like learning new things. I mean, obviously got Raspberry Pi 4, but apparently that's got an issue. Actually, I've heard recently with the Wi-Fi and the HDMI. Apparently, the HDMI affects the Wi-Fi. It's interfering with it, and so it completely screws them up. <laughs> so if you try and do HDMI high resolution or something like that, it, um, the frequencies end up being the same as Wi-Fi, and it um, messes up the Raspberry Pi's Wi-Fi connection. Eh, whoops. Oh, well. Apparently, that's what I've heard. I don't, I don't know that much about it. I could be wrong. This will be an interesting little project once I figure out what I'm going to do. Part of what I wanted to do with these was to actually have a Raspberry Pi running a web server to run the mypartsbin.com open source version of the parts database. For those of you that haven't seen it or haven't seen my posts about it, I've created a website called mypartsbin.com. That is basically a parts inventory site, so you can put your own parts in there. It's completely free. I'm not charging anything. There's nothing onto all about it. I'm just doing it as a thing for the community, right? You can put your parts in there, and it's, you can put in there where they are, how many you've got, where to get them from. You, got, you, know, you can put links in there to, da to data sheets or whatever. Okay, you can do all that. Most of it's basically free filled forms, so you can put whatever you want in them. And that's also downloadable and backup, so you can actually download the database of your parts and upload it as well. Do it both ways. I've also got an open source version which you can download, which is modified, a heavily modified version of the website basically. It's very different for security reasons because I don't want people knowing the code of the website. It's it's different. Okay, I've changed it all basically. I've got two sites. I've got the free one which you can download and host yourself on your own web server. Um, or put it on your own website if you want. You can do that. But it's not secure compared to the one I've got on the actual on my website, okay? My website one's got a lot of security built into it and things like that. The, the one you download has no security in it whatsoever. It's extremely basic, so I highly recommend you don't put it on a website because it could easily be hacked. But if you're running on a local web server, you'll be fine, okay? I've done all that sort of stuff to um, make enough differences between the, the one you can download, the open source version, and the one on a website to make sure that the website it can't be compromised so easily. Anyway, the idea, as I was saying, I'm creating a web server on its Raspberry Pi figure out how to run the database on one of these. So that's the plan. If I can do that and then add to the open source thing and say, look, here's the code to make it onto a Raspberry Pi, or this is the instructions how to do it onto a Raspberry Pi, it may be helpful. Or if someone else out there has already done it, let me know. Um, that would also be very helpful. Could save me some time. What's in here? Okay, it's none of these. I purchased one of these recently from a local supplier. It's a surge protector. There's different ratings for these things and different specs and voltage ratings and surge protection ratings, stuff like that. So I've got another one. Just want to compare it to see if it actually they can be plugged in together. I can use these modules as plugins for the spares, the yellow one, or, or not. How interchangeable these things are, I really don't know. You'll just be interested to see what it is. So it's basically got a thin row mount there. So these are plug-in modules. Let's actually open this up and show you. So these do just plug in, let's unplug one. I'll try and unplug one, they will be really tight fit. Well, really tight fit. They're super tight, which is good because you don't want to be loose. Hold on, I need to get this out, hold on. So let's try and get it out now. It's quite tight all the way actually. So there we go, that's the actual insert. So basically you have a ground connection here, a live and neutral, and so these are, um, Oh god, the name's escaping me. The surge protection devices, okay? So they've got um What the hell is it called? Come on. Hmm, hold on, I think about this. So these will have metal oxide resistors in there, okay? And with these quite bulky ones. So metal oxide resistors, so they've got no resistance, uh, they really high resistance until you get to a threshold voltage, then they'll start to conduct, and they can take a large current, at least for a short time, before they blow. And the idea is it will short out any big power spikes, like voltage spikes across the supply lines to ground. Right? So if it's greater than 275 volts AC, it will start to, well that's what it's rated at at least, so there's a big spike, I think it's, I think it's like 50% more or something like that, I think it's rated to, maybe, I can't remember now. If once it reaches a certain threshold voltage, it will short out basically the live to the earth. All right? So it will, sh it will shunt any big voltage spikes to ground. 
and protect the house. That's the, that's the idea at least. So basically these are sacrificial devices so they can absorb some surges without blowing but eventually they will actually, um, if you get a big enough surge and a big enough, big enough voltage spike, the unit will actually die. It will blow the MOV inside there and you have to replace them. That's why they plug in modules like this so you can just unplug it from the board and plug a new one in without having to rewire the whole system. But yeah, they're quite common. Not all houses have them. I wish all houses did have them. But there's a risk that if these aren't installed correctly, you can actually cause a fire. You've got to start thinking it, it creates a short circuit. This could potentially catch fire if you don't do it right. These, these need to be fused as well. A big spike, it will shunt it to ground, which should absorb the spike. Then it will also trip a circuit breaker or blow a fuse or whatever. Okay? So if it's short set, it will actually um, be protected as well. It will kill the power to it. So you have to have these things fused. You have to have that. Anyway, I'm not an electrician, but this is what I know about them. Perhaps if you are an electrician, you've got something else to add to that, please do. Check it in the comments below. Correct me if I'm wrong. We'll get to the big review items soon, so don't disappear. Stick around. Okay, a couple of SMA to... Oh my god, my memory is completely gone. <laughs> In connectors, that's what I'm trying to think of. Like SMA to in connector adapters. So you can plug this into like the front of a spectrum analyzer or something like that, or any other device. And this end is an SMA connector. That's what they are, pretty simple things. They're fairly cheap actually. So there's been a few times I wished I had some of these for connecting up gear for doing testing and I didn't have any. I always meant to get some, I remembered recently I should buy some. And uh, so I did. The bit links for these down below. These were pretty cheap, I think only a couple of dollars each, I mean, not much at all. Okay, a couple of little USB charge things. I'm not quite sure why I bothered buying these actually. I think they're just cheap. But I was working on a project recently, which I've done a video for. That feels pretty horrible. Oh yeah, I did a video for it recently. Charging an Apple iPhone. I couldn't get it to charge using the built-in USB conversion on a car accessory socket adapter thing. It's like a multi-way adapter. I did a video on it recently. I published it on the 28th. 28th November. Go back and have a look at that if it interests you. It wouldn't charge the phone. It, the, char the phone wouldn't recognise it was there because the data lines had no connections whatsoever. So I did some experiments with different kinds of configurations and data lines to see what would make it work. Part of that was me thinking oh, I should probably get some of these little adapters because then I could just plug that in not worry about it. <laughs> so there's was apparently 3.1 amps. iPhone, iPod and iPad and iPad 2. Be interesting to see what that actually look like. How do I get them apart? Probably not. Shall we open one up? Shall we? See what's in there? I think we should. Well, if I open it up, it's going to be destructive because they're welded shut. So, yeah, I don't want to break them. So I'm not going to open it up, sorry. What's in this one? Let me know what you think about this new mailbag format, but I'm trying to do more at once and better editing. Let me know what you think. You know, do you prefer a really short mailbag where I'll just chuck in like four items or five items? Or do you prefer ones like this where I'm going through a whole bunch of stuff all in one go and trying to cover each one in less time to make it more interesting? I don't know. That's what I think I'm doing anyway. I could be wrong. Let me know. So, LCD screen assemblies times two. Again, this comes back to me wanting to future proof the iPhone 6S's, which I've got. Um, comes with two tool sets, two sets of wipes, tension card. It's a nice screen assembly. So, and it also comes with a protection film in there. And they're both the same colour. I can't remember if I bought two black ones or, or black and white or what. Right, let's try and get this one out. There you go, it's a white one as well. So, one black screen, one white screen. You know, so I was getting these things whilst I can get them. Just makes sense. So, yeah, big links down below for these if you've got an iPhone 6S. I got these ones before from the same person and their quality was very good. So I thought I'd get some more from the same one. Although these ones seem different. One of the ones I had before came with all the bits installed and these ones don't have them. Little plastic inserts go inside here. So normally in here there's a little plastic insert goes in there. Around the camera and it's not there. The ones I got previously, I think they're for a 6, not a 6S. So maybe there's slight differences between their own supply. He's taken off the original screen, it's not really a big deal. Just one thing you have to do. 
Right, review items. I'm not going to do the reviews right now, I'm just going to quickly show you what I've got. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon, that's what's to see these review items. Alright, so when I do publish these videos, which will be soon, I'm going to be doing it too far away. I've got two items here which I'll now be reviewing. I'm just going to quickly show you them, what I've got, and then I'll do review videos later on. So make sure you check those out when they come out. This one here will be very good, I think, for most people. I think I know what this is. I'm pretty sure I know what it is. This company approached me and asked me if I was interested, and I said, yeah, sure. People will be interested in this. So this is for your benefit. I didn't actually need this myself because I've already got this covered pretty well myself with my own existing equipment. But um, I thought this would be a benefit to everyone else. You can see, and on star. So thank you very much for sending this to me. Let's have a look what we got. So it's digital microscope, gives it away quite a bit, doesn't it? So this is say, oh, a view item, obviously. So it's a microscope with a base. You can buy this directly from the website, I think, or I'm not sure it was Amazon as well, I'm not sure, I can't remember now. They did tell me, but I've been doing a view, so look, it's got a remote control with it. It's got a nice light base, your microscope, with a screen attachment. So, yep, I'll be doing a view on this. Make sure you uh, come and check that out when I publish it. I'm not going to show too much now. What else have got here? USB connection with power cable. Another USB, some buttons for controls. Also, you've got a stand in here as well, adjustable stand base, a charger. So, yep, I'm not showing you too much now. That will do for the time being. Come back and watch the next video when I uh, when I publish that. You'll see some more. But yeah, from what I've seen, this looks like it's in my brief amount of research. It looks like it's a reasonable microscope. It's worth having a look at. So we'll see where we go. Check the review video when I publish that. You find out. Then these, I actually contacted the company about these and said, hey, do you want to send some to me? Because I saw them recently featured on Dave's channel, actually. EV blog. And um, I thought, oh, I'll give it a go. I'll see if I can uh, get them to send me something too. And they did. They said, yeah, sure. So that's quite pleasing. So here we have two iFixit toolkits. Very generous. So we've got this kit here and this kit here. So which ones do they have bottle numbers on them? This is called the Manta Precision Kit and this one's called the ProTech Toolkit. So excellent. So I'll be doing videos on these. I'm not going to open them up right now. I'm not going to spoil it for you. Check out those review videos too. I'll open these up and have a good look at them, see what bits they get, see what they can be used on. Um, they're quite extensive kits, which is great. I'm quite sick of having things like this, <laughs> you know, yeah. Or I've got a drawer full of bits and pieces and it's like different sets because I can't use one set for everything so I have to get bits and pieces from different sets and it's, it's a real pain. So it's not be nice to actually have some decent kits. I fix it, everyone knows I fix it. So thank you very much for them, for sending them to me as well. Make sure you go and check out the site, I'll chuck some links down below as well for both iFixit and for the End On Star microscope. I'm going to keep repeating myself, make sure you check out the review videos, they'll be very soon. I'll probably do this this week. Alright, so I'm going to jump the queue with this mailbag video, this is going to be published on Monday. I'm recording this on Saturday, get it done and ready for Monday. I did have another one queued up but I've decided to skip the queue because I've got these big review items here which I want to get out. And then I'll do a review on this probably on Wednesday. I'll probably do this one Wednesday and we'll see how we go from there. So thanks a lot. Subscribe, click the bell icon, share the video, comment down below, have a chat. Always, always read every comment, every single comment I read. Every single one of them, I, I read everything. I may not always respond, but um, I read everyone. So thanks a lot, catch you later. Bye.